and this is the inaugural meeting, <coughs> the inaugural meeting of the Europe, Eurasia, and Emerging Threat Subcommittee for the 114th Congress. And I am uh, happy uh, to inter introduce our new ranking member, Greg Meeks of New York. And I'm sure that we will have a very productive uh, uh, session together in this, uh, this next two years. So uh, we're very happy to have you with us, Gregory. Uh, before I go into my opening statement, I want to recognize that we are joined in the audience by Sarah Paulsworth. Sarah, where are you? And uh, Sarah's husband, Imen, and I'm going to pronounce this, Husenoff, uh, who helped find, uh, excuse me, to, uh, to found the Azari and Azari NGO dedicated to journalist safety. And when it became clear that he was uh, wanted by the authorities. Uh, uh, he asked for the United States Embassy for help. Our embassy turned him away, but he was granted safe haven in the Swiss Embassy, where he is today. And again, I guess it's a sad day when the Swiss are more courageous than the Americans. Uh, our topic for this afternoon is the U.S. relationship with Azerbaijan, a country of about 9 million people on the coast of the Caspian Sea, sandwiched between Iran, Russia, Armenia, Georgia, and Turkey, um, a pretty tough neighborhood. Our relationship with Azerbaijan is normally described as being comprised of three parts, energy, security, and human rights. Azerbaijan is rich in oil and natural gas, and since the 1990s, it has grown into a notable exporter of oil, uh, which is making Azerbaijan a relatively and notably wealthy country. Now, with the construction of the Southern Gas Corridor, Azerbaijan has the potential to play a key role in helping to provide the European Union with sources of natural gas that is not controlled by Russia. The Azerbaijani government has been a source of irreplaceable support for the United States and NATO operations in Afghanistan. Azerbaijan is a key link in the northern distribution network which supplies and ferries troops battling in Afghanistan. On this point, uh, I'd like to mention especially, I want to thank the Azerbaijani government for their cooperation in saving the lives of numerous U.S. military personnel. While acknowledging this important context, it is impossible to overlook Azerbaijan's poor track record when it comes to civil liberties. Azerbaijan, as I say, is in a very tough neighborhood and borders on other countries, this is important, it borders on other countries that have far worse human rights records, uh, but human rights violations in one country does not justify or excuse them in another country. So we need to keep these in perspective both on both sides of that argument. The, the disturbing reports of 90 plus uh, uh, political prisoners held by the Azerbaijani government just can't be ignored. And it would uh, be better for all concerned if the Azerbaijani government, which has many positive attributes, which we are putting into our calculation, but it would certainly be better for all of us, uh, including uh, these attributes uh, also include what freedom of religion and, and other important elements. And of course, it would be a really good thing if the Azerbaijani government wasn't so thin-skinned about criticism, because that leads them to actions that really are, are, are unacceptable and unnecessary, causing all of us problems, including themselves. The purpose of this hearing is not, and I repeat, not to unfairly bash Azerbaijan, but uh, disregarding its shortcomings will not improve the situation. Uh, as was evident the other day when, uh, after uh, Christmas in Azerbaijan, the authorities 
raided and shut down the Boku Bureau of Radio Free Europe and Radio Liberty. That was, of course, shutting down Radio Liberty and Radio Free Europe is just unacceptable. I myself have advocated, for example, that the same Azeri language service that we're talking about that was used uh, in Radio Liberty and Radio Free Europe, that that same Azari language service covered northern Iran and to service the Azari people in Iran. The Baku, the Baku Bureau and its employees should be released and be free to go about their work. Again, the purpose of this hearing is not to attack or bash Azerbaijan. It serves everyone's interest to recognize the many positive aspects of our relationship with Azerbaijan and the great potential that Azerbaijan has to play a positive role and is already playing a positive regional role. And, and this positive role in that region will have significance for the entire planet. Uh, there is a legitimate fear, for example, of radical Islamic uh, subterfuge of Azari society and Azari government. Unfortunately, repressing democratic elements in any society increases the appeal that such radicals have. So it's in no one's best interest to have uh, thin skin about being thin skinned about criticism and to act against people who are criticizing your government for whatever reason. The people of Azerbaijan are not fanatics, and neither is their government. They have much to be proud of, but flaws that should not be ignored. I look forward to hearing from the panel today and hope that their conversation with us will leave us with some constructive recommendations of how we can improve our relations with Azerbaijan and how Azerbaijan can improve their relations with us. And I would hope uh, that uh, without objection, all members will have at least five legislative days to submit uh, additional questions for extraneous materials for the record. And uh, before uh, recognizing Mr. Meeks for his opening statement, I'd like to recognize that we have a very special guest with us. We have one whose husband is, uh, of course, being held in Azerbaijan. We wish him well. and. Uh, uh, hope that uh, maybe this hearing can say, we're friends, let this guy go, please. And uh, uh, we also have a wonderful other good friend, uh, Dan Burton, who... Dan who? Dan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Dan Burton, who actually chaired this committee uh, a, couple of time, a couple of years ago and uh, has been a dear friend to all of us and one of the most hardworking and responsible members of Congress that I met in my 26 years here. Uh, and he's a, a fine man. And Dan, we're very, very pleased that you've come here to, uh, to observe what we're get doing today. And with that said, uh, Mr. Meeks, uh, please.